the cross. At the cross. Oh yeah. Where I first saw the light. Oh, and the burden. And the burden. And the burden. What I'm thinking about, or what I was thinking about, oh, for, for a while, I think I mentioned it, I think I mentioned it on Friday. I said, everybody's going to die if we don't go in the resurrection, resurrection. I said, but my objective or my goal is if I, if and when I die, I don't want it to be from negligence. That is, I fail to take care of myself. Negligence. Not allowing our better judgment to prevail. One of the concerns as saints and church members we have to be with, be concerned with, is being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Being at the wrong place at the wrong time. We take it for granted if we're going to go from point A to point B, we're going to get there. Um, We make dates. We're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to go here, we're going to go there. We assume that it's going to become a reality. We assume that. But I want to stir up everyone's conscience to get them to realize that what a preacher used to say, we are mercy's children. You know what that means? We only hear by the mercies of God. Mercy's children. Here, let me get a hint. Psalms. Uh, what did I say? Psalms 103, I think it is. Here, let me put my glasses on. This is the psalmist. 103, verse uh, verse 10. Let's start there. He, God, have not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Said we have not been punished are reprimanded like we should. Say, God did not, now remember, whatever your age is, that's 365 days in a year. Most of that time, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Then those of us that lived in sin, some of us lived in sin for years. I lived in sin for Um, 22 years minus adolescence and so forth some of you still living in sin and yet God did not punish us according to our conduct say but he he was merciful say we deserved this that and the other And God was merciful. 
Then the psalmist explained in verse number 11, he said, now look, 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 look how high the heavens are above the earth. So great is his mercy towards them that reverence him. How many of us reverence God? I told you when I was a kid, didn't play with the Bible, wouldn't even use this phrase. You hear people say, I swear to God. No. I wouldn't say that. I swear to God. I reverence him. When I went to church, only thing I did wrong when I went to church was chew gum. And the ushers had to get on me about that. But I stopped that. But I reverence God. It says, his mercy is inexhaustible or Im- immeasurable. He said, well, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions for, uh, from us. He said, God is not whipping us every day of our lives for what we've done in the past. He has mitigated means he's lessened the severity of it. Um, mitigate, let's say for instance, uh, you know that you deserve, a, I'm talking about childhood, you know that you deserve a whipping. I think, come to my mind now, one time my mother was so tired from working, vaguely I remember I was supposed to get a, what we call a whipping but I didn't get it. She mitigated because she was tired, circumstantially. But God understands our framework, how we're made. Look what it says here. 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that reverence or fear him. Why? For he knoweth our frame, our structure, our body, composition. He knows all about us. He remembers that we're nothing but dust. I hear Pastor Ford saying we're nothing but glorified dust. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So he realized how helpless we are. Hebrews chapter 13, how helpless we are. Uh, We must remember because we are dust, it is so, listen to me, it is so easy, easy to be deceived. In fact, it's indicative of one of the characteristics, one of the many characteristics of the time that we live in, is that many shall be, even to the point of the very elect or the sharpest. This is about staying true, to, listen to me, staying true to your commitment. Being saved is about a commitment. It's all about commitment. And most of us have veered away from our commitment in the churches worldwide. Jesus cannot even return except it is exemplified worldwide a falling, a falling what? Paul says the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall do what? Do, what, what are they gonna, good people depart from the faith. Why? Giving heed to Peter was with Jesus. He was being seduced and he didn't realize it. I'm talking about when the Lord, when Peter told Jesus, I'm not going to let you go. And the Lord turned and rebuked. Re, re, something, I hear something going on. Turn around and rebuke. Peter, but he turned to Peter, but he knew it was Peter's voice, his lips, etc. But he knew that wasn't Peter's intent. Peter was sincere when he said, 
He didn't want Jesus to suffer. If the Lord did not suffer, you and I would not be here. But Peter didn't understand that. It was, listen to me, it was an emotional decision. Jesus turned and said, get thee hence. said, get you behind me, Satan. He was being seduced, influenced, and didn't realize it. The other problem we have to deal with is our mind, your intentions. It must be reference here. Let me tell you about our intentions, my intentions. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there are the what? So you think you're right. Our intention. The heart is deceitful above all things in what? My heart, your heart is deceitful. It'll make you think you're right. Make you feel like you're right, but man should not live by bread alone, but by... Here are the duty, what God did for the church. The church is an institution. Hospital is an institution. College is an institution, etc. It's, it, it's a structure. It's an objective. It's for a, a specific purpose. Well, he institutionalized the church. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're what? 90%, 80% of everything we do, we cannot say, God told me to do it. We just did it because we felt like doing it. I remember when my uh, relatives, they were having the first or second family reunion. That's what it was in Philadelphia. And they were contacting, do you know I have relatives, I had relatives in Connecticut, New York City, Buffalo, haven't seen any of them. I've been to Atlanta, uh, my aunt, have two aunts on my father's side, two sisters of his, in Atlanta. I got first cousin, they might be alive, I don't know if they're alive. I haven't tried to find them. They haven't sought me out, so I haven't sought them out. Now, they're having a church event, and all the family getting together with the worship of God, but to drink, smoke, lie, and curse. That's all they do is drink, lie, and curse. Talk about sin, what we used to do in the olden days. Remember when we did this and did that? Who wants to hear about sin? So word got out. They said, oh, make sure, make sure you get Maine. I think it was about five or six. They said, oh, Maine ain't going to come. Say, no use you inviting. No, I think it was my father. My father said, you know Maine ain't going to go to that. They said, JC, uh, g- get in touch with Maine and tell them that we're having this and we're buying T-shirts and so forth. He said, oh, that boy ain't going to come. He was right because he knew I had a commitment. And what they were doing, that did not fit the agenda for the commitment. I'm concerned about reality. Reality is we have to be fruitful. That's the reality. You must do something that glorifies God. Something basic like in Hebrews chapter 13, I think it is. Basic. Let brotherly love continue, verse 1. Say, we're supposed to have a particular or special attachment to each other, a kindness, an act of kindness, consideration, etc. So now continue that. So now be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So now look, make sure you're kind to everyone you meet. 
though it's rare, there might be the scars or a manifestation of an angel. So you don't know. Verse 3. Remember them that are in locked up. Remember those that are incarcerated. Remember those, we're talking about those that are persecuted for their faith. Say, now don't forget about them. You might not be directly involved, but indirectly we all are involved. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. Sympathize. Not only sympathize, but you got to empathize. Empathize means I got to do something. We had a campaign where we, for prisoners, Christians that were in prison, where all you had to do is sign your name was a, a letter that was made up. You know, most of the people wouldn't even do that. It is a letter of encouragement. Who drafted that, Sister Laris? Well, yeah, I heard your voice. You drafted a letter? Different ones. All you had to do is sign. The, you didn't have to bring a pen. You didn't, you, you, you didn't have to think of anything. It was encouraging those that are in prison or in bonds. And you wouldn't even do it. Thought, thoughtfulness. That's how we are. That's the way we are. Say, remember with them as them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Empathy. Sign your, in fact, reestablish that campaign. Oh, I did it? Okay, she gave me some sign language. I got it. Well, anyway. Our thinking is not in a line with the scriptures. Drop down to verse number seven. Remember them which have the rule over you. This is a new phase that we're living in. Uh, people are having church in their homes because they don't want to come to an institution. They feel as though that it's not necessary. The preterists, I have to teach you about the preterists, they believe that the Bible has been fulfilled. Uh, the preterists, a lot of people are becoming preterists. What that does is give you the good feeling, I can do what I want to do. I don't have to go by this. Look it up about the preterists. Here says you're institutionalized. Every one of us is a part of a church institution. Upon this rock I'll build my church. Institutionalized. That's why I said you got root. From the inception of Israel as a nation, rules of 50, rules of 100, rules of 1,000. Rules. We live in a generation that don't want rules. Children don't want rules. Adults don't want rules. But they don't understand that eternity is at stake, not just time, but eternity is the big picture. So remember them which have the rule over you and have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith, what's that word? Say, follow their faith. Say, if they're able to demonstrate, they should demonstrate, say, follow it. Consider the end of their behavior conversation. Go over to verse number 17. I'm not going to harp on this. We're institutionalized. Peter was the chief apostle of the 12 lambs apostle. And, he, and, and this is what Peter said. Be subject, what? One to another. Institutionalized. Obey them that have rule over you and do what? Submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. And they that must give, and this, this is the part that I'm, 
constantly concerned with, I'm constantly concerned with this here. As they must, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account. So wait a minute. Uh, Ezekiel, Psalms, Old Testament talks about the watchman on the wall. To understand the watchman on the wall, the floor is the city, and this is the top of the wall. Those down in the city do, don't have the advantage that the watchmen have and cannot see as far. You're down in the city. So it said, obey the watchmen. Most people, no, I'm not taking it back. Many people today think, assume that they can watch for their own souls. It's not what the scripture tells me. We have to be watchful, but when it comes to the spiritual, the spiritual, you need guidance. Everybody doesn't understand the scripture like the watchman does. And the only way the watchman understands is it got to have be revealed. I don't understand anything about the scriptures because of my IQ or or any particular academic brilliance. It's because God opens my eyes as the watchman. Say, for they watch for your souls as they must give account. Now, here's the key. That they may do it with, oh, it's a joy. Uh Uh-huh. And not with so they don't cause grief. For that is what? Says so unprofitable. That's that, 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 that scripture. 38th chapter Isaiah. Coming back to Hebrews in a second. 38th chapter. Again, this is Hezekiah. The pro- what a, the great one of the greatest kings in Israel. Many consider him second to David. Verse thirty-one. I'm sorry. Verse one. In those days was Hezekiah's term. You know what this means? Terminally ill. He's sick. He's dying. Say, at that particular time, the son of Amos came unto him, Isaiah came to him, and thus said the Lord, Isaiah is giving the king a message. Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt not recover. Thou shalt die and not live. Now God is gracious. He sends the prophet to him and said, look, you're sick. You're on your sick bed. Say, put everything in order. Who's going who's gonna to do this? Who's going to do that? Say, it's, it's time for you to depart. Isaiah did not understand what we understand. We're looking in hindsight. Then Hezekiah turned his his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Now, God did not have to use Isaiah. God could have told Hezekiah himself. But it's institutional lies. A prophet is a part of the institution. God didn't need Isaiah, but that's the method. When Paul saw, hold that, Verse, chapter 9 of Acts, quickly. Come, we're coming right back. Chapter 9 of Acts. Did I see 9? Yes. Here, God himself intervenes in the institution uh, to uh, convert Paul, Saul of Tarsus and Lord, became Paul. And we're going to pick it up real quickly. Verse 3. 
And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there, there shone around about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Now he was punishing the saints. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. That means when you had an animal that was unruly, they had these sharp prickers, goads, that if the animal would kick, he would hurt himself but not injure himself. He said, you can't win this battle. And he, Paul, saw trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And he said, go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. God could have told them himself. But it's institutionalized. He's already talking to him. He could have told him, Paul say, what, what, what do I do? I need to rectify this. God could have told me right then and there. He said, uh, it's an institution. It's a system. See, see you, 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 you have to go to the institution. Look what it says here. Arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou shalt must do. All right, let's go back to Hezekiah. God will not have us circumvent the institution. In fact, in, if two brothers or two sisters have a disagreement because they are part of the institution, say, take a witness with you to try to rectify it. He said, if you don't, if that doesn't occur, take, take more. He said, if that doesn't re bring about the desired result, say, tell the church. And if he won't listen to the church, treat him as a heathen. That's God. He said, treat him as a heathen. Stay with me. Hezekiah turned and prayed, verse 2, towards the wall. He, he's praying. He knows that he has been sentenced. God has already determined this is the end. But Hezekiah incurred God's mercy. He said, remember now. Oh, Lord, I beg you, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. Say, so Lord, I want you to retrospect in my past. I've done everything that I should have done. I can't say that. How many of you could say that? Can't say it. I beseech ye, I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, complete heart, and have done that which is good. Ooh. In thy sight. Say, Lord, you know my actions, you know my behavior. Say, I want you to reevaluate or reassess my life before you, and based on how I have lived, Grant me a life extension. Say, just predicated on my past. Examine, assess, evaluate my past. Just based on that, he's asking God to change his mind. He does not want to die. He doesn't understand death. And, and all he said, and Hezekiah cried. Wept means greatly he exhausted himself with crying couldn't control it then came the word of to the lord came came the word of the lord to, uh, to isaiah isaiah had left king hezekiah and in kings it says he was in the middle of the court and god spoke to isaiah said turn around Turn around. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, verse 4, go, 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 go back, turn around. 
verse 5, and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I've heard, I heard thy prayer. I have seen how you wept. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. So I evaluated your past. I saw your ups and your downs. I saw your struggles. I saw your victory. And I have determined based on your past. I'm going to give you 15 more years. You know how many people in the world wish that could be a reality? They didn't get another 15 years? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Based on the past. Let's see, Hebrews chapter 11, I do. The aim of the objective is, I will position, live, conduct myself in a way that I am sure, I am sure that God will say to me, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. If the Lord was, he doesn't have to put a microscope on us, but if he was just examining right now the contents of our heart, is it pure? Blessed are the who? Is it pure? Right, not tomorrow, but right now. What would he find? If our heart could become visible, it would frighten most of us to death. What we think and what goes through our mind. We have our main objective while you are living is not to succeed. Main objective, not to succeed, but to please but to please God. Please him. Song says, is it well with your soul? You think God is well if it's well with your soul. Every day the reality that I can be walking and drop dead right now. Got to be ready. Not only be ready, stay. Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane again. I do always those things that do what? Please. Not about pleasing myself, but pleasing God. If we do have a crisis, and you, every one of us is going to have a crisis. It's almost inescapable. You are going to be tested for concerning your commitment. You're going to be tested. Failure is not acceptable. It is not an, right now, it should not be an option. Say, I can't fail now. No, not now. Maybe years ago, but say, but not now. He's already promised if I will align myself with his word, he will fix everything in me that needs to be fixed. Least we got to be able to say, Lord, I tried with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my soul, I tried. Lord, go ask him, you know what the scripture said? He will present you. What will we do? Present us faultless before the presence of his glory with what? Say so when God finishes this makeover we're still in the process of being made over we're still not what we ought to be God is still working on us Paul told the Philippians it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his pleasure 
So whatever is happen to, happening to us right now, it should be, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pain, thank you, Jesus. Finances, thank you, Jesus. Loneliness, thank you, Jesus. Someone sick, thank you, Jesus. Because it could be, could be what? Much worse. So I'm concerned about the deception in our midst. I pray for the church all the time. Every day I'm praying for the churches around the world. But here my concern is, as I told you, 36 years, still think about my mom didn't make it. And that was my sole objective as a church, was to get my family saved. I want uh, My father almost got there, but he would not yield. He would not give in. That was my objective, get him, get him saved. And so knowing that they didn't make it, not that I didn't love my father, I just was just super close to my mother. Goes through my mind. I, I keep asking the question, what more could I have done? How could I have changed that? Goes through my mind. Not every day. I would say sometimes two or three times a week or every two or three months, I visualize people that I know that did not make it that are in hell. I purpose, I don't want to go to hell. It's an objective not to go to hell. I take my soul serious. I take the word of God serious. Scripture said God is not what M, what's that word? Mocked. So no, you might forget about the past, but there's a price that you got to pay. And God is not a forgetful God. We are still here because God has not lost hope in us. A person cannot come to church just because they decide they want to come to church. No, they must be drawn. The fact that you're here is not an accident. God is trying to reach you. Faith. So what can I give God? I've got to trust him. I've got to have faith. Because the scripture says, without, without faith, what? That, that tells you, that tells you where you stand spiritually. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It tells you where you stand spiritually. So much of a problem as this was, in the book of Luke, I think it's chapter 18, 19, don't turn when the Son of Man returned to the earth, shall he find? Is your faith dwindling? When the scripture says, be strong in the Lord and the power is might, it's talking about faith. Mountain moving faith. Let's say it again. Mountain moving faith. Chapter 11. Verse number six. But without, without what? Uh huh. It is what? To please him. For he that cometh to God must believe he is. Most of us won't even consult God. We're making decisions. And what decisions you and I make, it is based on faith. It is based on faith. Drop down with me to verse number 13. These are examples. These are examples. If there are no living examples, which is ludicrous, Trust history. Verse 13, these all died 
If you don't make it, if you're going to die, make sure it's in faith. Say, so these all died in faith, not having, received, not having received the promise, but they believe a distance off. Say, so way down the line, they could see it. And it really means they could see eternity. Seeing them afar off and were persuaded of them, the promises. Now listen, this is a promise. He that had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's a promise. The mere fact that you and I are alive. You can't keep yourself alive. Supplements don't keep me alive. Medication don't keep you alive. Job understood. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord what? We're existing because God chose to think the best of us. Even though we're not as faithful and dedicated and committed as we are, he has not given up. Persuaded them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. You know what that means? This world is not my home. This is a temporary situation that we're in. None of us asked to come here. Your parents didn't ask you that you want to be born. Circumstantially, God permitted you to live Many thousands of babies die, don't live. And you and I are privileged to live. Why? What did we do as a baby? Nothing. Sinners, we're supposed to do what? Die. The wages of sin is death. Every one of us have sinned. If God punishes us, we're dead. We're in hell. But however, it is of the Lord's mercies. Say it again. However, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His compassion fail of not. This morning, they're new. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. There's no harm to keep. There's no harm to walk with your mind. If you could not think of anything else, you should at least think of gratitude. Did not have to open my eyes. Did not have to see another day. And yet here I am. Psalmist, what now, when I put this all together, what shall I render unto the Lord? Say, what can I do to show my gratitude? Just the song said, just think of his goodness to you. Immediately when we count our blessings and name them one by one to see what God has done for us, our immediate response is, not my will, but thou will be done. We should be able to say, Lord, whatever you have, want me to do, I'll do it. No doubt, no reservation, because we feel indebted. How many of us feel indebted? Says here, they are persuaded by not what is happening now, but what they can see afar off. Let Jesus fix it for you afar off. He knows just what to do. Whenever you pray, not mine, let him have. Let him have what? 
Again, the song, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in. So Lord, I need prayer. You and I cannot make it without prayer. Those saying, if you don't pray, you won't stay. And remember, every day we're getting stronger or weaker. Every day we're getting stronger or weaker. Now, what cost are you on? Are you getting stronger? A river swimming downstream does not stand still. It is constantly moving with the current. We're moving one direction or the other. Our love, gratitude, and appreciation from him is either growing or it's waning. So what do you mean? When we first got saved, God was special to us. Everybody, thank you, Jesus. He was special. Then as time went on, he wasn't as special as he was in the beginning. It happens to millions. They, they lose their sense of gratitude. They lose the feeling of indebtedness. They forget about all the prayers that God has answered. Lord, uh, uh, my mother. Lord, my son. Uh, Lord, my, my, my daughter. Lord, I, I, I need a job. Lord, don't let my, my sickness get any worse. Uh, Lord, protect my house. I'm driving. I need your angels to have charge of me. We can go on and go on and go on and go on. But when we think of the goodness, and this is all good stuff. This is good stuff. I forgot about that I was in the hospital. I was 22 years old. I forgot all about that. I recall the other day, 20, yeah, I think I was 22. And I, I had a bleeding problem. I remember it hospital down, I don't know what street it was in South Philadelphia. Forgot all about it. I try to remind myself, find reasons, discover reasons, re reflect reasons why I should be indebted to God. Let's just deal with the car, cars. I could have been in maybe 10 fatal, fatal accidents. But something at the last minute wasn't my great instincts. Remember coming out of the church, 232nd Street, on 2nd Street, and I have the right of way, and something tells me to slow down, and the car coming from my left was running the stop sign. And I was going to be hit, he was going to hit me, and the car, boom, i never forget it. car just moved over. That wasn't me. Oh, I'm coming from Philadelphia. I'm sleeping, tired, I'm pressing it. On I-90, somewhere around Kingston, I kept pushing it. I'm sleeping, but I kept, how many of you have been sleeping and pushed it? Tell it like it is. And I pushed it. And then all of a sudden I was asleep. And when I opened my eyes, I was in the fast lane heading towards the guardrail. I don't know how long that happened, but I know it was the Lord. I've had people come head on with me and, and turn away. It, it, it was God. If you ever had a flat tire while you're driving, front tire, it's a miracle that you're still here. Amen. Begin to count that. I can remember a couple times, just a few times, where I had some food in my throat and I was choking. Anybody ever have a, a, a test of choking with food? One, two, yeah. yeah, you're here. You could have died, but you're here. Who did it? It was nothing but God. Sick. We could have been worse, but God spared us. Didn't he do it? From this day forward, from this day forward, I've changed. 
That's a recommitment. You already committed when you got saved, you were committed. Now we need a recommitment. Say, Lord, I need you to fix me. I've tried to do it my way. Tried to be good without the strength. You must if you don't, I'm going to old saying, if you don't pray, you won't stay. And the devil will manipulate your mind. We're living in a time of what type of spirits? And, and, and what? And doctrines of devil. Here it says the institution is first and foremost. Institutionalized means I'm conforming to the word of God. That's all I'm thinking about. God has been good to me. I think I was thinking the other day. I think it was yesterday. Back about 50 years. That's hard to believe. No, 60 years I was thinking. That's hard to believe. How does a person become 60 years old or 50 years? That, that's a, I can remember when I was a kid, those were old people. <laughs> I told you when I was there getting this lead out of me or something like that, as I told you on Friday, the lady was here, she was old as the hills, and then another one, man, he was older than two hills. I felt good, I was young. And I wanted to, I told you I wanted to find out how old they were. I said, yes, uh, I've never had a problem with telling my age. People are paranoid today. They don't want somebody to know how old they are. You better be thankful to God that, you, that you're still alive. <laughs> so I said, I'm set, uh, I said, well, I'm 75. So I'm 76 years old. I was waiting for a response for them to say something. Them folks were going to tell their age, and they're old as the hills. I'm grateful for not some things, but for everything that God has done. But I'm also grateful because I can see afar off for what he is going to. So how many of us have a problem that we know that Jesus is going to fix it? No doubt in your mind he's going to fix it. There are people, I don't want to call some of the names out there, in dire desperation. Critical upon critical. It'll be a miracle. I told Sister Massey, they need a miracle. We might get to the point where we will need a miracle. I can remember quite well, as I heard Deacon Dolly's voice, I remember he was in Samaritan Hospital. What? Tell him, you were doing what? Were you alive, living? What were you doing? So on his deathbed. Uncle B.B., where's Uncle B.B.? What? Remember Uncle B.B.? How long had he been? I didn't know he was in a coma. How long was he in a coma? Just that day? He wasn't supposed to live two days afterward. The other stories. My story. Everybody has a story that if it had not been for God. I was listening to a preacher. He was talking about a 17-year-old boy that had just graduated. And him and his friend, his friend, family, father gave him a brand new vehicle. He stops by the house to pick up this 17-year-old. And less than a mile, both of them were dead. A guy, a, a, the other driver, hit them headlong. Brand new car, less than a mile away from home, he's dead. The preacher says, he tells the story a lot. He said he only had a small nick on the back of his head. He said you never thought from a little problem on the back of his head. He said, but it hit perfectly where it caused the brain to swell. 17 years old, just driving. See, most of us don't realize you have to drive defensively now. You've got so many people on the road that can't, as my father would say, can't drive a lick. 
you, you, you have to look out for yourself and look out for the other drivers. Take nothing for granted. Finally, go back to chapter 13. Chapter, no, I'm sorry, sorry. No, no, I'm 11, 11. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't want us to ever forget the price that these believers have paid just to stay true to their commitment. Commitment is a vow. And it talks about the horrific circumstances they had to deal with. In fact, Isaiah, they claimed that Isaiah, the prophet that we were reading there, he was sawn, sawn in half while he was alive. They, they cut him in half. Now, that must have been torturous. You're alive and they're cutting you in half. Those type of atrocities, listen to me, are occurring today, modern time, but they're going to worsen. If you and I should be tested, if you and I should be tested, we've got to make sure that we're ready. We cannot wait until the encounter, until the test becomes reality. We must be prepared ahead of time. Paul talks about his desire, and we should have the same desire, heaven. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ. You don't have anything else to worry about. It's far better. But he realized his purpose. Every one of us must realize our purpose. He said, but it's more needful. It's more needful for me to be here. The harvest is great. What about the labors? Can any of us say it's not more needful for me to be here? Can any of us say again, oh, it's not more needful for me to be here? But it is. Finally, it says a message. See, your greatest message that you have is the effect that this has had on you, how you have changed. So I don't know what to say to people. Tell them the truth. Say, I was a sinner on my way to hell, and now I've changed. Your testimony is your jewel that you have of life. It's all about what God has done for you. These people that were tortured, just, just let me read a little bit. 35, just a little bit. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were, that's frightening within itself. That is frightening within. Torture? I was thinking about the other, a couple weeks ago about the movie. Was that a couple weeks ago? You know that movie that you showed that she was in a... Uh, a shipping container. How long ago was that? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, well, well, anyway, she talked about, now I know the Germans did it, to break the Americans' torture. They wanted pain to be as excruciating as it possibly can. They would take a nail and a hammer under your fingernails and just torture with pain in all your fingers. Uh, I thought about, uh, they, they didn't show it on, on the uh, video, but they were torturing a leader. One country, one coup had overturned the other coup, and they asked him, where's the money? And the head of the coup uh, ex-head of the crew. He said, I don't know. He said, I, I don't know where it's at. He said, cut his ear off. And he screamed, ah! You could hear the scream, ah! Cut his ear off. He said, where's the money? He promised he didn't know what it is. Cut his other ear off, just screaming. Uh, uncontrollably. Torture. There are all forms of torture today. One of the famous ones they do, I think it's torture. Take rubber... I'm not going to name the country. Take rubber tires, put you inside of rubber tires, 
put gasoline on it, and you burn to death like that. Polycarp, his believers, he was an old man, I think he was in his 80s, he was going to burn at the stake, set him on fire. And the believers that he was leaving behind, he said, they said to Bishop Polycarp, say, if God helps you, if God gives you grace, let us know in the fire. They wanted encouragement. Flame built up in a minute and it engulfed Bishop Polycarp, covered him. But before it completely covered him, they said he clapped his hands three times, signaling that God was helping him to endure the torture. If God did it for Bishop Polycarp, he'd do it for us. But we have to establish a, 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 a what, what, what I would call a committed track record. So, Lord, remember I stayed, said others left, others went, said, Lord, but I'm still here. And all of us should be thankful. 6,000, 6,000, 6,000, 6,000. Doesn't mean that all of them are lost and we're still here. Sooner or later, it's going to be our time. But when that time arrives, just be ready. Song says, are you ready? Are you ready? This is the truth, and I mean this. Whatever you're going through, I mean this. I know the Lord. Will make a way. Now, now you, you've got to mean it. You've got to mean it. ourselves right, we don't need God. You can't fix yourself. You, you, you cannot change, add 18 inches to your statue. You can't do it. So the song says, Just as I
are just words, but the meaning is the conviction that comes from our heart. We pray all the time, search me, yes. O oh God, and know my what? Heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way just as Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You've been good to us. We're still in the land of the living. Glory. Struggling, but we're still here. Ups and downs, but we're still here. Our faith is being stretched. But we're still here. Lord, we're coming in a submissive spirit. We, we submit. We yield. We mean it from our hearts. Not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, we testify and admit that you sure have been good to us. Been good to our family. Glory. We've kept them on the altar. And they're still in the land of the living. Thank you. Thank you and thank you and thank you. Lord, we want to be like Job, who made intercessions for his sons and daughters, his loved ones every day. Make us mindful to keep them in prayer. But Lord, we want you to use us. Use us to bring them under conviction. We can't do it with our mind or with our emotions, but your word, because your word said, he that went of souls is what? We need wisdom. Whatever you have to do, Lord, do it. We need wisdom. We pray for those that are sick and struggling. Some of us might be sick and not aware of it. But Lord, we trust that everything in our lives as we submit to you is working together for good. Glory! We're not going to worry ourselves to death about what could be because we're going to keep our minds stayed on thee. For your word said that thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Lord, let there be healing in relationships. Families, friends, husband, wife, let there be healing. Perform the unexpected miracle. Now we trust, Lord, some way, somehow, or another, we will be what we ought to be because you have not given up on us. Glory! Wherever thy people gather, bless them likewise you have blessed us. Heal our souls, our minds, and bodies. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for what you're going to do. We believe, we believe, we believe that one day you shall present us faultless before the presence of our glory with exceeding joy. And we say thank you, Jesus. Don't understand how you're going to do it, but thank you, Jesus. Save sinners and reclaim backsliders. Give your name all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory.
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let us say amen. amen. Glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Wow, we thank God for that um, powerful message. Praying that um, we take heed to the word. Uh, announcements for this coming week. 